In this tutorial, we are going to discuss a subgroup of ionic compounds called multivalent compounds. And before we begin, let's just kind of break this down. Multi uh, means more than one. And valent refers to the valence shell. Recall that the valent shell is the outer ring, the outer shell that contains the electrons that, that are involved in reactions. So this literally means an atom that can have more than one valence. And that's really all there is to it. If you remember doing simple ionic compounds, simple binary ionic compounds, where you would you'd take sodium and you would hook it with chlorine, and knew that sodium was plus one and this was minus one, came together in a one-to-one -one relationship to make neutral and you said NaCl. You didn't really have to worry about it. So let's look at a periodic table. These ones over here are all plus one. They're all plus two. And that goes for all of them in this group or family. We learned these are all plus three. And so there was really um, no question about these ones at all. That these all have a valence that is the same. These ones indicate there's a little bit of difference for these ones because some of them will have more than one charge and that will be noted here on the periodic table. So zinc has one, these ones have two. So the ones that have two or three are called multivalent. And if you take a look at your periodic table, there are a pile that are multivalent. And you have to look at your transition element block here in order to figure out which ones are. I'm just going to go through how to name them and and how to create chemical formulas for them in this tutorial. So we'll do a common one, which is iron. Iron's multivalent. Iron can exist in a plus two valence, or it can actually have a plus three valence. And if you connect these with oxygen, say, we'll connect them both with oxygen, you can come up with a very different compound. This is iron oxide and this is iron oxide. Just doing the crisscross or how many of each do I need to make it neutral. You come up with these two compounds and you would say that these are uh, iron oxide. However, they're very different. They have different properties, melting, boiling points. They look different. So chemical and physical properties are different. And so they can't both be called iron oxide. So we call this one iron 2 oxide. We're using Roman numerals now to indicate the charge that iron carries in this specific compound. So this would be iron 3 oxide. Remember that this actually tells you the charge of this, that it's plus 3. And this tells you the charge on this iron, which is plus 2. And so when, mul when you're using multivalent atoms, you have to use Roman numerals in order to specify the valence or which valence you are you're using. So typically students find it uh, easier to go from a chemical formula to a name. So now you just have to be careful. You need to ask yourself now, is this metal multivalent? So on a test you're gonna they're gonna be all mixed up. So I'll give you an example. Maybe I'll say, you know, name this compound. And you would say, oh that's calcium oxide and you'd be right and then I'd say well name this compound and you might say copper chloride and unfortunately I'd have to mark you wrong on that one because copper is multivalent it can have a plus one or a plus two and you'd have to look at your periodic table in order to figure that out but you're going to have your periodic table with you in your test so this this stuff you can just leave on the periodic table. This one you have to look at the compound in order to figure out well, what what is what charge does chlorine carry. Recall that your compounds are broken up into really positive parts and negative parts. Let me indicate the positive part with blue and the negative part with red. 
There's one thing we do know about the negative part, and that is that chlorine always has a negative 1. So chlorine always has a negative 1. And how many chlorine are there? There are two chlorines in this compound. So if each chlorine is negative 1, and there's two of them, then the total negative charges are minus 2. The other thing we know about compounds is that the plus charges and the minus charges, these both have to add up to zero. So if this is minus two over here, then this has to be plus two over here. And so all we have to do is figure out, well, how many, how many uh, copper are there? Well, there's only one. And so this must mean that all of that plus two charge is on that one copper in order for us to get a plus 2 and to cancel it with your minus 2. And so this has to be named copper 2 chloride. Let's try another example. SNO2. This would be called tin oxide. Tin something oxide. We need to figure out which one it is. You'll find that tin can actually exist as a plus 2 or a plus 4. So you figure out which one it is to, in order to put the Roman numerals in here to get the correct answer. So recall that ionic compounds have positive parts and negative parts. And we need to look at the negative parts in order to determine what the positive parts will be. So, what do we know about oxygen? Oxygen carries a minus 2 charge. And there's two of these things. So that means the total negative charges must be minus 4. Then, conversely, the SN has to be plus 4. Because there's only one of them there. So all of the plus 4 must be on that SN. So this would be tin 4 oxide. When it comes to creating formulas from names, it becomes a little bit easier with multivalent because there's no question about the charge you need to use. Consider, consider this. Copper 2 oxide. Well, the 2 tells us without any question what the charge is on copper. I only need to look at the periodic table to find out what symbol copper is. And copper is Cu. So I can write Cu and I know it's going to be plus 2. I can write oxide. I know is a derivative of oxygen. It ends in IDE so it must be on the front side of the periodic table. And it has a minus 2 charge. It's in group 16. And then I ask myself this question. How many of each of these do I need to make the compound neutral? And of course, it's one and one. You could also crisscross and reduce if you needed to do that as well. Compound CuO. Go ahead and try a few, and if you have any questions, please come and see me.